I would like to start with a question. Who of you guys have used a sensory substitution system today? Hands up, please. <laughs> and what if I told you that you're using one of the oldest sensory substitution systems while looking at the screen? Because sensory substitution means sending information to your brain through a sensory channel, which is not the default one. And let's take speech as example. The default channel is our ears, right? But by looking at the slide, you are sending speech information to your brain through your eyes. Writing is speech coded by some tiny, funny figures called letters. And when I read something, I can almost hear this little voice speaking to me in my head. Do you have the same thing? I have another tricky question for you. Do colors exist outside your head? Well, color is a construction of your brain. It doesn't exist in the outside world. The only thing which exists in the outside world is electromagnetic radiation. And while we can measure the frequencies of electromagnetic radiation, we can't really measure your perception of color. So if you perceive a red apple like this, maybe the person who's sitting next to you perceives a red apple like this. And you would both call it red. The funny thing is, you wouldn't have any problems with communication. And it's not difficult to think why color information is important. It is very important when you're hungry or when someone else is hungry. <laughs> when the light hits our retina, our photoreceptor cells get activated, and from now on, everything is, almost everything, is electrical. And the funny thing is that our brain is so plastic that for the brain, it doesn't matter which sensory input we use. We can still, let's say, activate visual cortex through our ears, so we can basically see through our ears. And this is extremely important for many of the 40 million blind people who live around the world. And this is eight times the population of Norway. And if you think that the basic tool they use is the guide dog, then you're wrong. It's still the white cane. And I think it's strange. Because the first electronic travel lights for the blinds were developed over 100 years ago by Noyshevsky. And the next experiments, like Bakirita's chair, it was like dentist chair with little rods that were pressing on the back, were showing very promising results. So why developing of visual sensory substitution devices so difficult? The main challenge lies in the amount of information which we send through different senses. We send 100 times more information through our eyes than through our ears. And while we're using visual sens sensory substitution devices, we don't want to fill up the whole auditory channel. That's why we have to code the most important information, and this is color. When you look at this picture, you can easily understand how much information you can take just from color. You can check the weather, you can know when the roads end, road ends and where the grass begins. And color is very helpful in many situations in our daily lives because people are different. Like my wife, she's very organized, and I prefer a bit more creative approach. <laughs> and when you're blind, you don't really have a choice. You have to be very organized. And we want to give them this choice. So I hope we can agree that color information is important. But there were many people who tried to connect the world of colors with the world of sounds. And many of them did this thing by continuously associating the frequency of light and the frequency of sound. But in this way, it's very difficult to understand what kind of color is it. Our colorophone method is different. It is inspired by the human eye, which is equipped with many millions of photosensitive cells called cones. And our perception of color comes from comparison of responses of different cone types. So when our green and red cones are active, we perceive our color as yellow. And when the blue and green are active, we perceive the color as cyan, light blue. And when all three are active, we perceive the color as white. So we decided 
to associate the red color component with a high frequency sound, the green color component with the middle frequency, and the blue with the low frequency sound. And we represent whiteness as white noise. In this way, we can represent every possible color with a sound which is easy to understand. And if you only know a few rules of color mixing, you can get our system, understand it in just a few minutes of using it. And we've actually tested our system with some blind user. And here's Einstein. He lost his sight when he was two. And on this video, he's testing our system for the second time in his life. And we are still testing our system, and today we thought about making the biggest experiment with the visual sensory substitution device in history, and I hope you can help us with that. So your job will be to identify the blueberry yogurt by hearing it, among the other yogurts. So we're going to learn it first. And keep your fingers crossed, because that's the experimental system, so I really hope it will work. Okay, so here we are going to learn it. Yeah, that's the experimental part. So here's the blueberry yogurt. Here's the melon. Here's the vanilla. And here's the strawberry. Do you remember that the blue color was this deep tone? So your job will be to raise your hand when you're hearing the blueberry yogurt. So please close your eyes. And here we go. Please don't move now and open your eyes. That was really cool. <laughs> so there are some advanced system out, some systems out there, like the bionic eye, like the, the retinal implant, but the price tag on those systems is pretty scary. And 90% of the blind people in the world lives in poor countries. So we're planning, we will build something which is a thousand times cheaper. And if a bachelor group with four students is able to build this wearable prototype in four months, just think about it, what we can do together. Thank you very much.